Hi brother, teacher here. I want to talk to you for a moment about the subject of self-defense. And when I say self-defense, I don't necessarily mean from the viewpoint of a martial arts practitioner. Self-defense, by whatever means is necessary for you, the individual, to protect yourself, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a set of skills physically that you acquired through training and teaching over the years. It sometimes means that maybe you just simply have the will or the mind to survive a potential encounter in a street situation, maybe even in your home. It could be you defending yourself or protecting yourself and or your loved ones even with a weapon, an extension of your hand. It could be a hammer, it could be a screwdriver, a meat cleaver, butcher knife, a set of keys, and even a firearm or knife. But there's a particular attitude and or mindset that one must possess when considering self-defense and survival. And it sounds a little um, off-key when you use the expression in a so-called modern-day society, the expression survival, as it relates to your physical health uh, and what someone could potentially want to do to you in terms of harm. Now, survival for most people would be you know, economically, you know, staying afloat, uh, keeping above water and being able to provide for themselves and their families and so forth. Most people equate survival to that. Now, survival in this particular instance is physical for the most part. And of course, if you protect yourself and your loved ones physically, you maintain a certain equilibrium, if you will, emotionally or balance. You feel comfortable afterwards knowing that you're able to stave off some possible assault now mindset i'm going to switch gears for a moment to the self-defense class now let's touch on martial arts for a minute i've seen many times uh demonstrations uh, of self-defense in the street and uh I see guys in martial arts studios on YouTube telling you how to defend against this punch, this particular attack, or if someone grabs you a certain way, and so on and so forth. I just saw uh, a video of a celebrity talking about self-defense not too long ago, and one point that he made that was very valid, self-defense is never scripted. There's no choreography. Pardon me. There is never someone that you know that you've worked a skit out with or a certain routine out with prior to you being engaged in a street confrontation. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, Self defense is very um, unprepared, uh, unforeseen as far as what the person or the individuals that you may be up against could possibly do to you. It's not like someone's going to make a phone call and say, well, we're going to meet you on this corner here uh, uh, under the cloak of darkness uh, by this alley or this parking lot and we're going to attack you. No one tells you anything and you don't know anything. It just simply happens. So what type of mindset should one have if they were to be involved in a situation where they have to protect themselves or their loved ones. You have to have the mindset of an animal. It's not pretty. As I began to say about the self-defense uh, scenario in a martial arts uh, self-defense video, if you will, or even just a self-defense video in general that we have seen on YouTube, those people know each other, one another. and. They've already practiced or rehearsed what they're going to do for YouTube in many instances. This is my take on doing self-defense 
uh, videos, and I have done some. We, I, believe in concept, concepts and principles of self-defense. Very, very rarely, if at all, you're going to see any scenario in the street work the same way that it did in class. It's just not going to happen. No one is going to attack you from a posture that's already predetermined that they're going to punch you from that posture. You say, hey Joe, throw a punch at me, you know, right here and I'm going to follow with this. It doesn't work that way in the street. It just happens. And usually it is a barrage of attacks. And it is also a surprise attack. No one is going to forewarn you that they're going to attack you. It's just simply going to happen. So, you need to be aware. You need to be alert. Vigilant. To at least have an equal playing field. When you leave your home or if you are in a particular environment where this could happen or potentially happen to you. You need to be constantly aware and not have your mental guard down. And also, when you practice self-defense with whomever, it could be a family member, and you all are just training, you know, to prepare for the maybe inevitable, depending on where you live at sometimes, uh, or a martial arts instructor that you may be learning under, you want to make sure that you practice as close to street based scenarios and fighting as possible and not something that's choreographed not something that's scripted as I forestated okay you can do traditional techniques you can have the models or the framework and you say well this is just a training exercise but within your training exercise you need to be developing power, strength, mobility, because a moving target is difficult to strike. You need to be developing a sense of where your opponent is in relationship to you and what tools that you have to use for the different ranges. There is a kicking range, there's a striking range, and there's a grappling range. So you need to train on all three of those ranges kicking striking grappling up close and personal and even if you are on the ground now god forbid if you hit the ground you don't want to stay there in a self-defense situation because if there are other people there that are associates or friends or family members of the one that you are defending against you have placed yourself in a compromising position by being on the ground. You never know if they're going to assist that individual in harming you. So you want to try for the most part to stay on your feet. And this is the type of training that you should have when you are in your training mode and facility with whomever you're training with. Staying on your feet. Practice being aware of your surroundings. Practice keeping a medium stance where you're not standing too tall a medium stance so that you can keep your footing practice if you can or if you are able to kick kicking to the legs the knees the shins low kicks where you can maintain a more proper balance in the street confrontation practice even a takedown or a simple jujitsu slash judo throw practice elbows up close gouging to the eyes clutching the throat striking to the neck where the arteries leading to the brain carry blood strike those areas throw knees if you're a woman to the man's genitalia have the animal turn on when you are in that situation where someone is trying to do you harm this is the proper mindset that one must have if you're going to, at the bare minimum, walk away with the least amount of injury. And never assume that just because you have taken martial arts classes, 
I don't care if you've been a martial arts practitioner for 20, 30 years. You can still be injured in a self-defense situation. You never know what's going to happen because there is the unknown element. The individual could have several people with them. They could have weapons, knives, box cutters, clubs, chains, bottles. You don't know that. So don't assume just because I have this certain set of skill or skill set training that I'm going to walk away unscathed. It rarely happens that way. Think survival. Not just in the back of your mind. Always let this rest on you and your conscience. Survival. I want to go home to my loved ones. I want to go home to my family. I'm not going to allow anyone to make me a victim. I don't want to be a victim and I'm not going to be a victim. And so if I have to stick my finger in someone's eye, I will. If I have to bite a nose off or an ear off, I'll do it. If I have to strike someone in the throat, I'll do it. Pulling hair, elbows, clawing, it doesn't matter. If I have to stick an ink pen in their neck to survive, I will. This is the type of attitude that you must turn on in a self-defense situation. And you should practice as close to this mindset as possible in a training environment. If you're fooling around, laughing and joking, clowning with your training partner, and you expect that mentality and mindset to translate to real fighting when you get out in the real world, you are at best delusional. Chances are you will become a victim. You have to practice, you must practice as close to reality as possible. If that means sometimes you are very sore after your training session. If that means sometimes you get a bloody nose or a busted lip. At least you will have the confidence that I have been placed under duress or stress during my training and I know that it is for my good. It is for the betterment of myself and it's for my survival if I ever have to face that unknown element in the street. This is the mindset that you must have if you're going to walk away. And I'm serious. So how you train in your respective dojo, training hall, gym, facility, and even home for self-defense is how you are going to respond in an actual street confrontation or self-defense situation. It's cut and dry. It's that simple. Look forward to some more self-defense training sessions from myself in the very near future. So in the meantime, keep this in your mind. Take care of yourselves and one another. This is Brother Teacher. I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget what I said. Train as if you are actually in a fight. So when you are in that actual fight, your training won't disappoint you. I'm out.